of the year. McAtee also pledged that people who misgender someone would not end up in, in court under the provisions of the bill. The Justice Minister said misgendering was not, quote, a deliberate intent to spread hatred against another person. However, many people still have huge misgivings about what will be covered by this new law. So here to tell us a bit more, I'm joined by the Sunday Independent columnist, David Quinn. David, welcome to the show. Could you just run through with us? What are some of the misgivings about this new hate speech legislation? Well, the first thing, Andrew, it doesn't define hatred. Um, it basically says, more or less, um, hatred is hatred. Um, so there's no clear definition, so it's completely up to a court to decide eventually what hatred is. Uh, so it's extremely nebulous, extremely ambiguous. So that's a huge problem that's been raised even by groups who broadly favour this law. Um, uh, because they simply don't know how it's going to be interpreted. Uh, the minister is saying that um, misgendering won't fall under this law because there wouldn't be uh, an intention to cause hatred. Actually, under the bill, you don't have to intend to cause hatred. You can be considered to be reckless. That is, you didn't properly consider what the effect of your speech might be. So she can't be certain that uh, misgendering won't come under this law either and wouldn't be eventually interpreted by a court in such a way. Um, a former justice minister, Michael McDougall, pointed out in the Senate or upper chamber um, it, last June that potentially a citizen's arrest could be made under this. That is, you and I are having a conversation. You decide I've, say, I've said something hate, hateful after this law passes, and you could make a citizen's arrest on me for saying something hateful. Now, again, it would depend on what a court does, but it really is something else that is not just police can make arrests under this, that potentially citizens can make arrests under this as well. And also, um, they can seize your computer or um, laptop or phone or other electronic device out of concern that you are about to release something hateful. And if you don't hand over your password to the police, you can be fined thousands of euro. So it's an extremely draconian law. Yeah, all of this is, is absolutely chilling, and particularly this emphasis on intention. I mean, firstly, to prosecute someone for something they intended to do, how does anyone know? How can a court possibly delve into someone's private thoughts and decide whether they intended something to be hateful or whether it inadvertently ended up being interpreted as hateful? I mean, I presume what they have in mind is um, so somebody has a track record of speech that they think falls under the definition of hate. And they suspect that this person has content on their device that they're about to release. But we're adding so many suppositions to this, you can already see the problem with the law. And I'm not sure there's any other law like this on the statute books in any country. So there was a big conference here yesterday, and Michael Schellenberger, who I think has been on your show, uh, he's an American that's kind of coined the censorship industrial complex. And he addressed um, this big conference in Dublin yesterday. And he said that it's one of the worst laws of not the worst law that he has ever come across. So Ireland has become a, become a sort of outlier in respect to this. And we had Elon Musk, by the way, a few weeks ago saying, because you see, Twitter has its headquarters in Dublin, and he's concerned about this law, and he has said that possibly Twitter could take the case against the law, depending on how the law works out. So here we have the richest um, man in the world, one of the most powerful men in the world, and yes. this law has come to his attention, and he's saying, well, we just have to see what we do legally speaking. In response I mean, if, to it. if Schellenberg's saying it's one of the worst laws in the world, I mean, he's up to, against some pretty stiff competition. You know, I mean, the Scottish hate crime law is also similarly draconian, and these things are pushed through. Doesn't the Irish government stop to think for a moment that if you have vague legislation on the statute books that doesn't really define what hatred is, other than the circular definition, it means hatred, that that could be exploited by future governments to decry anything as hatred that they happen not to like? And it's not just future governments. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, there'll be all kinds of activist NGO, say NGOs looking 